Hello fellow Drupalers, this is Natalie for FriendlyDrupal.com with another video on using Drush and today I'm going to show you how to set up Drush aliases which allows you to do a lot of great things with your sites including using interactive shell. Now just to give you the preview, I am on my Egger server and I can switch to the interactive shell right now by running command trash core CLI. Uh, after that I can use um, I can choose any site and then I can just uh, use drush comments without using the word drush. For example I can run the update on my test site. Well let's cancel that. And you can um, always tell the site aliases by um, using Drush SA. So it's going to show you all the aliases that you have set up on your server. And since I'm using Egger, Egger is the one that's uh, been setting up aliases for me. And I can, um, if you um, run status command, it will show you the uh, where all the alias files are. And I got a lot of them because each uh, side for Egger has its own alias. So let me switch back to the new server, which does not have Egger or Drush um, aliases installed. And I will show you how to uh, have them set up there. So now I am on my new server. And if I run Drush SA, I don't see any aliases. And if I use Drush status, I can see that no alias files have been set up. So well, let's do it right now. Let's go to my uh, Drush directory. That's where I've been actually. Um, now I'm going to copy um, the, al the example alias files from the example directory. So you can see there is um, examples. So I can go and copy Sample aliases into the Drush directory as an aliases Drush um, RC dot PHP. Let's um, edit it. And this file is actually pretty well documented, so you can uh, scroll and see different options available. Um, take a look at when you have time. So right now I'm going to set up aliases for the two Drupal 7 sites I have here. Let's call them dev and stage. And this is really the simplest uh, aliases configuration which just has a uh, root which is the path to your Drupal installation. And the URI is the URL on your site how you access it when you open it in the browser. So let's save it. And let's check if the aliases files has actually been loaded for Drush. Okay, I've actually misspelled it. Um, let's try it again. Okay, now it sees it. Well, kind of uses includes, but whatever. And if I use Drush SA, it shows both of the new site aliases here. So now I can actually load the site for Drush just using this new aliases. For example, um, Drush at dev status. Drush aliases also allow you to specify defaults for various Drush commands or paths. Uh, let's try doing something now. For example, I can use a um, common specific array. Let's say I want to uh, I want to see the passwords uh, when I um, use the 
status comment. Let's save it. I can also use Drush Interactive Shell. And I'm going to use um, Dev. Now let's try uh, running status. And you can see it shows the passwords in the status um, printout. What's cool about the Drush Interactive Shell is that it's just a uh, wrapper um, around the regular Unix shell. So all the uh, standard uh, commands uh, still are still going to work. For example, I can uh, uh, change directory or do other stuff. Well, sometimes if uh, the command, um, the comments or aliases are the same, um, the Linux commands um, are going to take priority. And so in that case, you can just use the Drush prefix as usual. There is one caveat uh, when you're using interactive shell uh, is a question of if you're logged in as root or some other user. For example, I'm logged in as root on my test server, which is not a really good idea on production for the production environment, uh, primarily because security reasons. So normally if you're using cPanel, you would have different users. If you are using Agar, like I usually do, the sites are run by the Agar user, or sometimes it can just be Apache or www-data. So let me switch back to my Agar server, but I'm going to be logged in as root, just to show you what I mean. Sometimes if I'm logged in as root, I can use this command to work as an Agar user. If I try to use interactive shell, I will get the permission issues. So there are two ways around it. First, you can simply um, exit and as root just mod um, change permissions on uh, this directory, which you will have to do every time you uh, start a new session, which is kind of annoying. Or you can simply actual login as your Agar user or whatever user you're using. Just make sure that the user actually has the shell. And you can do it here. So you can see that um, my Agar actually has a shell and give this user a password or you can use the RSA key authentication that works. So as you can see, Drush aliases um, allow you to uh, do a lot of different things with your sites. And I haven't really shown any, uh, any anything interesting in this screencast because first you have to set up the aliases files, which is what we did. And of course, Interactive Shell is a great way to save uh, some time on typing Drush every time uh, you have to run multiple commands on your site. In the coming tutorials, I am planning on uh, showing some of the more advanced stuff you can do with Drush, such as synchronizing and deploying sites, of course, using the aliases. And we'll also be looking at the configuration file. So this was Natalie for friendlydrupal.com. If you have any comments, uh, please let me know. Until next time, bye.